we want to get moving and celebrate our mural and then maybe you can get some refreshments and get into the air conditioning. So I'm Karen Putup. I'm the president of PSA Art Awakenings and I need to first send regrets from our CEO Sarah Marriott who um, oversees PSA Behavioral Health Agency. Sarah actually started our Art Awakenings program about 20 years ago and she brought the program to Casa Grande starting with youth in 2004 and then we grew into serving adults shortly thereafter and part of that was thanks to Simpatico, which is soon to be Arizona Complete Health, because we received a grant from them, a community reinvestment grant, which made this beautiful mural possible. So I want to thank Simpatico right off the bat, specifically Greg Taylor and Michael Johnson, who are here. And Maria Chavoya is on her way, so she was an integral part about, of, of this. Also, the Casa Grande City Council and the Arts and Humanity Commission. Jonathan is here and he's going to say a few words shortly. And I don't think Steve Hart is here or Amber Kent are out here, but I did want to thank them as well. And our local site administrator, Ami. Where's Ami? I know she's here. She runs our local Art Awakenings program, has done a fabulous job with her staff and members for making this mural possible because it was the participants, many of whom are not here today, but it was their original concept that uh, developed the, this beautiful mural with our artist Antonio Passos. So for those of you who are not familiar with Art Awakenings, we are a statewide nonprofit behavioral health company. We utilize the arts, Art Awakening does, to help people recover from mental illness and substance use issues. It's a nationally recognized program. Mrs. Pence, the vice president's wife, even came to visit us in April. We were on international news, which was very exciting for us. So we have about 20 sites throughout the state. We have five galleries also. And one is here in Casa Grande, it's a great gallery. There's a wonderful alumni exhibit going on now. And the sales from that gallery go back to support the folks whose artwork is being shown. So it's, uh, it's great, you get to see beautiful artwork, but it also benefits the people who are busy working on their recovery journeys. So one of, one of the important things about the work that we do is of course connecting with the local residents and leaders, which we've had an opportunity to do through this art project. So um, we had 17 participants worked with Antonio Passos, our, our master artist, <laughs> to conceptualize and, and explain what the culture, history, and what the community has meant to them and their families in many instances over the decades. So the goal of the project is to raise awareness about the history and culture of uh, Casa Grande, but also to help reduce stigma related to behavioral illnesses. We want to acknowledge the value and the talents of our artists uh, while reducing that stigma. So artists believe that the mural depicts Casa Grande residents as embracing cultural diversity as a population and environment that is rich in culture and history. It captures the important contributions made by everyone over the decades who have helped sculpt Casa Grande into the great city that it is today. So this mural is one of eight that we have throughout the state. And we're particularly excited about this one because this mural found its home here on a city building. And we have not been able to establish a mural on a, on a building that will be there for perpetuity. So this one, we're here to unveil it. I don't know who's doing the unveiling. There's Maria Chavoya. Hello, Maria. Thank you for your help with this project as well. But it has a, a, a permanent home. And let's unveil it, then Antonio can tell us about the content. All righty. So um, how do we take it? Antonio is actually a world-renowned artist. He's exhibited on about every continent in the world. And he comes and introduces new mediums to our artists. So we are really delighted to have him work with our folks and work with us throughout the state. Well, there we are. We know we're finally finished. I know that some of you who are regular patrons to the library saw me working on it from beginning to end. And, uh, and now it's right here for you all. And uh, of course, we're really, really thrilled that it's in the library, you know, because we know that um, uh, a lot more folks will be able to, to see it and enjoy it. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about the history of the mural, um, how it came to be. Uh, I am not from Casa Grande, even though I came here once a week for class uh, for the last three years or so. So, but I, I'm not. I can't say that I'm a resident of Casa Grande, or I don't know much about the history of the of the town. But for that, we recruit the help of uh, of our participants 
in our studio, and they are from Casa Grande, generations and generations ago from Casa Grande. So they pretty much told me what, what it is that uh, should be on, on, in the mural. And I understood from the beginning that this was going to be an homage to, uh, to the folks who sacrificed so much to make this town what it is. We know that this is not the ideal town to grow uh, food for agriculture. It's really warm, very little water, and a really tough environment. But still, our pioneers and those before them uh, made it work. And uh, so we need to kind of uh, uh, remember them and thank them. Uh, and this is the way to thank them for every uh, sacrifice that they made. I know that there's a lot of families who came from all other parts of the country who sacrificed a lot. I mean, I'm talking about their lives uh, and a lot more. So we can see, going back further into history, of course, the uh, monument of the Casa Grande monument is, is like centered to the, uh, to the area. That's the name of the town comes from Casa Grande. A lot of people from out of town ask me, what does that mean, Casa Grande? You know, they don't understand that it means a big house, right? A big monument. <laughs> So we have the monument, and then we have um, a very cover chief uh, from way, way back. Um, and I wanted to be center, uh, centerpiece, not only because of it's important, because it was also very, uh, uh, very impacting, the image itself. And then, of course, we have the, uh, the Historical Society, which was, at, at once, I understand, was a church, uh, also a funerary home uh, as well. So there it is. Uh, and uh, the cotton. Uh, King Cotton, they call it, has been so pivotal to the development of this town. And I wanted to have this pioneer boy uh, be part of the beginning of the, uh, of the cotton industry there. Uh, and then so that's, I wanted to put him up front because it, it was so important uh, for, for me as well. And then so the irrigation uh, system that the Tohono O'odham and the Gila River Indians uh, put together many, many generations ago uh, is, is admired by everyone. Uh, how could they somehow figure that the water will go everywhere where it was needed? Uh, and that, of course, um, you know, uh, gave a great impulse to the agricultural uh, side of our town here. Uh, uh, um, the ranchers, of course, very important. And I know that there were quite a few women that ended up uh, in charge of the ranch that their husbands uh, started out. I knew a person in particular whose husband had passed away, and she didn't know what to do with the ranch. She's like, what am I supposed to do? I'm just a lady. So she figured, hell, I'm going to be a cowgirl. <laughs> and she, started, and she, she learned everything that needed to be done and was very success, successful as well. And here on this, on this section, we have Ms. Dallas. Uh, Ms. Dallas uh, was a pioneer in education, central uh, to the, the, the development of Casa Grande. Back in the day when children of color would not be allowed to uh, have an education, uh, she started on school, and the school was started uh, over by where the museum is right now, and she ran it for about 30 years or so. So I thought it was really important to give her her own space here. And then um, when it came to the industrial development of the, uh, of the town, uh, somebody who had been uh, a descendant of railroad workers, she said, my dad and my granddad worked in the railroad, and we need to put the railroad there somewhere into the middle. So, so that's what I did with the, uh, the engine right here, the train. And um, when it came to painting the, uh, the engine, uh, there were numbers that I had to put up there, right? Because every engine has a number, right? So I didn't know what number to put. I came up with whatever, and it didn't work out. So I figured, hell, I'm just going to put on my birthday. <laughs> So, uh, the first thing that came to my mind was like, hey, wait a minute, it's my birthday, right? So, then, so there it is, right? Uh, so you know, the whole composition is, is, is meant to be as, a, as an homage to the people who have worked so hard to make the city what it is. And I know that this city is growing really fast, mm -hmm. really fast. I can see it and everybody knows it. One of the fastest growing city in, this, in the West. So it is important to look back and thank those who gave so much to, to our town. So there it is. It's for you all to enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi, it's Mike Greg Taylor. He is the Vice President of Community Affairs for Sempenico, Arizona Community of Health. So I'd like him to say a few words. Sure, yeah, I and mean, we're just very proud to have been part of this and to provide the funding yeah. to make some of this happen. Not only as a testament to this city that we've, we've served for a very long time as, as a health plan, but also to, to its roots and, and, and its founders and, and to the piece that Karen mentioned that this is, this is a, a testament to recovery can take many forms. I mean, so many of the people who have worked on this have, are living with some kind of behavioral health challenge in their lives and, and for some people, this is what their recovery looks like. This is the conduit that they, they can express it through. So if we can recognize that history and the importance of their recovery journey, it's something that we are incredibly proud to be part of. So, you know, on behalf of all of us at, at formerly Simpatico, now Arizona Complete Health, um, we're, we're proud to be part of this. But thank you so much for braving the heat with us this morning, and, and uh, I look forward to coming back and see it day in and day out. Thank Thanks, you. Fred. Thank you. A lot of meetings and um, discussions over the past nine months to present the mural conception to find a home and bring it to reality and uh, we're so blessed to be in this beautiful facility it's amazing but we really had great support from the city and the arts and humanities committee so um, Jonathan Boyce is here to represent them Well, good morning, everybody. I didn't realize we we're going to be outside, so you know what? I won't pontificate. I'll try to keep it short and sweet. But I do want to say, Antonio, that I will never forget your birthday. <laughs> and I would guess that if you gave people your email address and your Facebook address, you would get bombarded with birthday wishes. What? That's a great idea. <laughs> wow. Cool. So, yeah. So anyway, I just want to say good morning and welcome everybody. My name is Jonathan Boyce. I'm the chair, uh, the chairman of the Arts and Humanities Commission for the city of Casa Grande. And I want to uh, thank uh, PSA uh, Behavioral Health Agency, uh, the city of Casa Grande, the, the Casa Grande Public Library for hosting this event, for having this, and inviting me to come in to say a, a few words about this. One thing I, I want to share with you, um, and I'm going to go ahead and read it, is our mission statement for the uh, uh, Arts and Humanities Commission because I think it really fits nicely with what this is all about, what this, what the Arts and Humanities Commission is trying to do for the city, and I probably would guess that many of you don't know what it is, so I want to share it with you now. This, the Casa Grande Arts and Humanities Commission is dedicated to integrating the arts and humanities, including the richness of the community's ethnic and cultural diversity, as part of the fabric of everyday life. The arts promote innovation and collaboration, positively impacts local economies, student learning, and cultural understanding. Toward this end, the commission serves as the entity stimulating and supporting excellence and accessibility in the arts and humanities for all citizens in the community of Casa Grande. The commission supports art that inspires, transforms minds, hearts, and lives in our neighborhoods and the entire community. And I would have to say, certainly, this last statement would apply to this. This is such a beautiful piece. And I have to tell you that this mural is a very exciting project. And the commission is very proud that, that you selected us to, well, to, to locate a, a site, to help you locate a site to be able to display it, to display your, your mural. And then when we were trying to decide that, we thought, okay, well, we've got to find a place or suggest a place that would be visible and accessible to the citizens and visitors. And so the public library, right? Mm -hmm. That seems like the perfect spot. So here we have it. But then I want to share with you also the first time that um, we met Antonio and I don't know, that was this like a year ago, maybe? Yeah. About a year ago. Yeah. Was it a year, a year ago? ago? August. Yeah. Well, I have to share with you that, I'm sorry, I'm getting out of the sun. Um, okay. <laughs> that when, when you first came, you came with a lot of renderings, a lot of sketches. sketches, and we were all just absolutely in awe of your work. And, you know, my brain works, I'm always constantly working like, wow, this is really good. What can we do with this, right? So they're coming here now. Keep in mind, they're coming here about this, right? And I'm sitting here, I'm looking through all of this, and I was so taken with the drawings, and specifically I was looking at the faces, individual faces in these drawings, and 
how he so was able to capture and um, represent the individual lives and their life stories. And, I, and, and it was Casa Grande, and I thought, this guy's so talented. We've got to find a way to showcase this guy's work and to bring it and bring it together for Casa Grande, right? And so my brain's working like this, and I thought, whoa, wait a minute, this is about the mural. This isn't about any of this. I thought, whoa, okay, you know what, let's shout this. Maybe one day we can make something work, right? So, but uh, I just was, and the rest of the commission was very, very excited when we saw your drawings right off the bat. So I just wanted to share that with you. When we saw it, we knew it was something very special. But as a commission, we will continue to seek these kinds of opportunities and these kinds of partnerships where we can collaborate and um, with schools and organizations and others to hopefully be able to bring art to the community, expand it so that the community is served and uh, hopefully enriched and uh, we can all be better people because of it. And on behalf of the, the commission, I would just like to thank PSA um, for giving us an opportunity to be, in some small way, a part of bringing this mural to fruition. So, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jonathan. So I know it's all hot. Thanks, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to our artist in particular, Antonio. But thank you for joining us today and supporting recovery through the arts and making, more importantly, PSA a permanent fixture of your community. We're blessed to be here. Thank you all. Thank you. I, uh, I cannot uh, leave without thanking you all and thanking, thanking the, uh, the newspaper, local newspaper. That was a great article. Uh, and the people in the library here throughout the weeks that I was working here, they were so awesome, so sensitive to my needs, bringing me water and so forth. Uh, and all the public coming through and making great comments, that really helps. But I would also like to invite you all to visit one other mural that we did here in town. And this is at the Art Awakening Studio, which is on... 309 West 2nd Street. Second Street. Uh, just in case you don't know where that is, it's right across the street from a the Wonder, Wonder Bar. Bar. <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows that place. So. Yeah, you. Thank you very much again, you guys. Thanks Thank so you so much. Thank you. Uh, been an artist, uh, teacher uh, for many, many years, uh, 20 some years, almost 30 years, and um, I have um, traveled the world showing my artwork and doing other projects, uh, other mural projects, uh, exhibited quite a few uh, times um, around you know, Europe, North Africa, and Asia, and then Mural painting is one of my favorite mediums because I can speak to more people. This mural um, is done on a technique that is called glazing. Uh, and what it is is that, first of all, I painted it all in blue, monochromatic, so I used uh, blue paint and white, and I got all the shading, all the values put together, the composition, and then once the blue part, the monochromatic part dried up, then I applied color kind of like the way they used to do the black and white pictures when they put tint on the black and white pictures to make it look like colored. Uh, colorizing, that's what it was called. Uh, it was kind of like the same effect. I wanted to go in that direction, basically because of the content uh, of the mural, being a historical uh, uh, description of the town. And uh, for the uh, images, I consulted with people who were native to the, to the town. Uh, me not being a native, although I'm from Arizona, not from Casa Grande, I wanted to uh, get the point of view and uh, the five cents from other people. So that's that's how it is. And our mural is open for everybody. You can you can see it and enjoy it anytime you want to at your leisure and bring family. And more than anything, uh, more, more important is the fact that it will be there for many years to come.